It's finally here. Sony just announced the a7 IV. I had it for two days and here are my thoughts. This is a Cinedy Review, supported by B&H and CVP. Sony's A7 series has dominated the full-frame mirrorless market for many years, ever since the first camera in the line was introduced in 2013. In terms of their video capabilities, and that is of course what interests us here at Cinedy most, the A7S and later the A7S II and the A7S III absolutely dominate the field. But what if you don't need their super low light capability, yet you want higher resolution stills images than the A7S series can deliver? The A7 III was a more budget conscious solution for that. However, it was already released three and a half years ago, which means unlike the A7S III, the A7 III has no 10-bit video. It still uses the old tiny Sony batteries and of course the autofocus is also lacking a bit. But Sony heard your prayers. They just introduced the A7 IV, their new basic level full-frame mirrorless camera. So the question is, what do we get in this new basic model? Well, it turns out quite a lot. The Sony A7 IV features a newly developed 33 megapixel Exmor R back illuminated full-frame sensor and combines it with the same Bions XR processor we find in the higher-end A7S III and the ultra-high-end Alpha One. The a7 III only had 24 megapixel sensor, so it's a big step up for photographers. And in terms of video quality, it oversamples the 7K from the sensor to 4K for a very detailed image. More importantly, we now have all the same 10-bit 422 color space codecs we have in the a7S III and A1, which of course is amazing. That also means that from a compression point of view, this camera shoots the same quality as a 10,000 euro Sony FX9, which I am looking at right now. The Sony a7 IV achieves that by using the all intraframe H.265 based XAVC SI codec, which has a maximum bitrate of up to 600 megabits per second. In order to be able to save all that data, the camera can read CF Express Type A cards alongside SDXC cards. Sony claims color reproduction is also significantly improved with the new sensor and processing. And for video, we now also have the S Cinetone picture profile, which is Sony's signature nice looking skin tone mode, while maintaining a good latitude. And that also makes its image compatible with many higher end Sony cameras like the Sony FX9, FX6 and also the A7S III. Low light is significantly less noisy in the a7 IV thanks to better processing, despite the higher resolution, which usually adds actually more noise. The 5-axis IBIS is still there, of course, and it works even better now. Before I talk about autofocus and the downsides of the a7 IV, let me do a quick commercial break. Well, in case you didn't hear, MZ.com is now also part of the Cinedy family. MZ is the best place to learn everything you can about filmmaking from script to shooting to post-production. Hundreds of hours of courses are in that platform. Because it's not about the gear, it's about how to tell a story. And that's what you learn with MZ. But now back to the a7 IV. Autofocus in Sony mirrorless cameras has really become very, very good over the last few years. And the a7 IV is no exception here. There's real-time touch tracking, but also AF face tracking that can be set to detect humans, animals and birds for photographers. Yes, it seems like birds are not animals for Sony. Interesting. But honestly speaking, it works remarkably well. I tested the animal autofocus tracking also in the Vienna Zoo. Now you see, in video terms, this camera is very, very similar to the a7S III. But what exactly are the downsides and differences between the cameras? Well, it turns out the a7 IV can only shoot up to 30 frames per second in 4K when using the full frame sensor width. This is, of course, a huge difference to the 120 frames per second in the 4K on the a7S III when you use it in full frame mode. However, up to 60 frames per second are available in the Super 35 crop mode on the a7 IV and it does 120 frames per second in Full HD at least. And in case you forgot, the biggest downside of the a7S III is that you don't have a 4K Super 35 crop mode at all because of its lower 12 megapixel resolution. 
Also, just like on the A7S III and the Alpha 1, please be sure to always have high temperature mode enabled when shooting video. Without it enabled and the screen folded in, the A7 IV overheated and then shut off on me after only about 12 minutes of shooting. But then with the high temperature mode enabled, this didn't happen anymore at all. In terms of the body of the camera, the a7 IV has a flip-out screen with a high-resolution LCD panel now, which is of course great for filming. And there is also a record button on top of the camera, which is new. We didn't have that in the a7 III. EVF resolution is much improved and very decent for focusing. The camera also comes now with a full-size HDMI port and a 10 gig USB-C for fast offloading. And there are of course microphone and headphone jacks as well. It's really all there. But there are two innovative features for video shooters specifically in this camera that no other Sony cameras has yet. One of them is called breathing compensation, which crops the image a little bit to conceal focus breathing of a lens when you shift the focus. Here you can see an example, a comparison of the feature disabled and then enabled, and you will see the difference. There is no focus breathing visible anymore. It only works, however, with original Sony lenses as far as I saw when I briefly tested it. The other new feature is called Focus Map and it immediately makes your preview image quite colorful. It visualizes depth of field and shows you what's behind your depth of field, the blue part, and what's in front of it, the red part. And the normal looking part is in focus. Now, this can really be useful to quickly determine how much of your image is in focus when adjusting the iris value. Now, to sum this up quickly, I really enjoyed shooting with the Sony a7 IV. And it's a lot more fully featured than I thought it would be for this basic level of camera. Sony clearly didn't cut out too many features out of this model and there will be people buying this instead of an a7S III if they don't need the super low light or 120 frames per second recording. This camera will definitely find its market. Well, thanks for watching this review. Stay tuned to CineD for a lot more gear review and news content. And of course, I'll see you on the next video and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Thank you.